If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have one of the big winners of Saturday night's UFC on ESPN Plus event in Raleigh, North Carolina. Back on the show, he picked up a unanimous decision win over Felipe Cajares. Montel Jackson is back on the show. Montel, congratulations. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. So let me ask you an honest question right off the bat. How many other things would you rather be doing than talking to me right now? I hope I rank a little bit above doing laundry and relacing sneakers and things like that, but I'm sure there's a lot of other things you'd rather be doing right now. So I appreciate the time very much. Uh, I, was, I, I really missed uh, jujitsu practice this morning, so that's just about it. Other than that, um, I'll probably be asleep or just, you know, at practice. Gym. All right. Well, that's not, too, that's not too bad. I expected you to have a laundry list of other things you'd rather be doing, but, uh, but great performance on Saturday. You were a bit overwhelming at many points throughout the fight on the feet with the wrestling and man, Felipe proved to be very tough and very gritty in that fight. How would you rate your performance overall, especially since fighters like yourself are, are the most self-critical people on the planet? Like six. Why six? Um, uh, I felt that I could have had like cleaner combos and then two, um, I, I don't think I, 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 I um I don't think I applied enough pressure to this guy. You don't think so? No. There's certain points of the fight that you remember going back and watching and thinking to yourself like you should have applied more pressure at these certain points. Any specific rounds? Yeah, probably probably uh, all the rounds, man. I, I think he was ready. Re he was ready to go uh, in the second round, probably. It, you know, I, I look at it like it, it being my fault and you know dragging a fight on so long. You know, when many people kind of forget to realize is when, when they talk about you is you've only been a professional mixed martial arts competitor for like two and a half years. Like you're still evolving and you're getting better. And to me, I think a fight like that was perfect for your development because you were dominant. You fought a guy that wouldn't go away. You won and it was like a clear win, but you were tested at different points of the fight as well. You had to, you know, you had to have learned a lot in that fight and taken quite a, quite a bit away from there. Is that accurate? Yeah. More, more say is just like a, like, like making adjustments and then applying them right away. Like quicker. anything, anything in particular. Um, uh, I could have uh, struck more out in the open, but um, I could have been striking more out in the open, but it. I I think I think uh, what he didn't want to do was he didn't want to wrestle me, so I made him wrestle. And then, you know, I made him fight me in the clinch a lot more just, just to keep the pressure on him and just to keep, uh, you know, like trying to suck everything, every little bit out of him to make him make make him fight me in like every uh, aspect of the fight. Other than if I'd have stayed out at range and just, you know, um, struck a little bit more with him, then I think he'd have got a little bit more comfortable. But, you know, once I start to apply more and more pressure, you know, and keep wrestling him, keep clinching him, keep fighting him in a, in a keep fighting him uh, very, very close, then um, I, I know he, he was going to have a hard time adjusting. The end of the first round, I know three-piece in the soda was such a huge thing last year, but you threw the entire freaking menu at that guy, and you were landing almost all those punches. His head was rocking back, and I, along with everybody else in the media world, in the social media world, and a lot of fighters on Twitter, too, were like, how the hell did, did he stay up? Like, how did he survive all of that? So... When that horn sounded after that insane flurry that you threw, like what were you thinking walking back to the stool before the second round? I gotta catch my breath. I gotta do it again. That, that's all I thought about. I, I gotta catch my breath. I gotta do it again. And I, I, I think, man, I, I think he was knocked out, man. I was waking him up, man, with the punches. You think so? It looked like that to me at different points as well. So like he was like, cause like his arm was like up. It was just like, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, he he knocked out. And then I was like waking him up with the punches, so it's all right. Were you surprised it wasn't stopped? No, I wasn't surprised. I I, I would have thought like you know they had to stop the fight, but you know this dude just ate like fifteen punches to the face, but he was still standing up. 
or defense was, was still holding him up. So keep punching. I think um, I think what caught everyone's attention on Saturday night was the walkout song. You walk out to Whitney Houston's "I Will Always Love You," and while many people you know applauded you for the selection and said you won the walkout song of the night. I had seen on Facebook that there there was more to that than just, you know, a different kind of a walkout song. So for those who may not know, why did you choose that particular song? My coach Jake, his mom died, uh, like, I think a, a little bit into like halfway into my camp, his mom died. And, you know, he tried to be all macho and stuff, but I, I know he was messed up. And I, I know his brother Morgan was messed up too. You know, their mom died. So, like, for him to still like continue to coach and still come, you know, like it just it just show like you know how strong he is and how how committed he is to like me and to my career, man. That you know he can put his feelings and emotions aside and still continue to coach and still like you know be here for my camp. So it was just like that small like bit of gratitude to him and to pay tribute to his mom. You know, I met his mom a couple of times. But she was very very nice. Did he know you were gonna do that before Saturday? No. And then it, it was it was even more funnier because um Heidi, you know Heidi Dean. Yeah. Okay. She uh she texted me. She asked me. She said she said Montel, uh, are you going with your regular uh, walkout son? And it's and it's usually yes because my song never really changes. So when I told her uh, Whitney Houston, I will always love you. She said, "What? Is this Montel?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "You sure?" I'm like, I'm like, yeah. She like. I'm gonna confirm with you in, in person when, when you <laughs> you get a fight, and then um, Jason uh, he he takes both of my phone numbers and asks me like, "Once are you picking one of Houston? I will always I will always love you." I'm like, "Yeah, don't tell Jake either." And he's like, "You sure?" I'm like, "Yeah." He like, "Okay," and then like, I just I thought that was funny, man, because it, it it really was. Did you, were you surprised at the response in, in the arena? Because everyone seemed to dig it and were singing along and stuff. Did you, were you surprised at that? I mean, you may not even even heard it because you were so focused on the fight. But were you surprised how positive the reaction was to the to the song? It's Whitney Houston, man. <laughs> we, we love Whitney Houston, man. And then especially that song, like who don't know that song, man? Like, I, I mean, you can tell like that song's been played like a million times. That song's been heard a million times, and. I don't think nobody in this world, like you, you don't even have to speak English to feel that song. So it's it's just pretty dope, man. I, I love them songs like that. I love soulful songs like that also. So how did uh how did Jake react to it once he once he heard it and and you spoke with him after the fight? I knew he was crying, but I couldn't see him because he was standing behind me. But he he thought I didn't know he was crying. I saw him crying. But when he came out, like when I turned around and looked, he's like, "What?" I was like, this your song? Because he wanted me to come out to a different song or whatever. I was like, like, nah. I'm not coming out to that, man. He thought I was going to come out to my regular song, but I surprised him. You know you're probably going to have to come out to that like every time you fight now. People are going to be hoping for it. Uh, I don't know. In terms of what's next for you, like I know the opponent doesn't matter all that much to you, but I, I guess I'll frame it this way. In a perfect world, when would you like to fight again? Do you have a specific time frame, month, a specific card in mind? It's whatever, man. It's whatever. Whatever they got lined up, man. Just send out the notice. Send that paperwork. We're gonna we gonna get right to it. We ain't gonna waste no time. You ready to get right back in it? Like if they offer you a fight in like March, April, is that is that good enough for you? Yeah, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. You know, I just I just I had like a nine month layover. Like I'm ready to fight, man. Like I'm I, like I have to fight all the time, man. As an amateur, I'm fighting all the time. My first time pro, fighting all the time, like, boom. I'm looking, trying to get, like, a fight, like, every month, every two months. Just to stay in there, you know, stay in the mindset, stay fresh, stay ready. Go back to what you're used to. This is this is how your career began. Yeah, you got you to gotta stay busy. You got you to gotta get active, man. Can't sit there and, you know, wait around, man, you know. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, how is, uh, how is O'Day doing? How Otis, as you like to call him, how how is he handling his UFC debut and what happened in that fight with Kelleher. O'Day's a competitor. You know, he's a competitor. He's a smart guy. He like it ain't too much really I can I can tell him, you know. He he got you know, he he just got to he got to make the adjustments. He got to be able to, to recognize and identify 
what went wrong, why it went wrong, how it went wrong, and how he can do better. How can he better prepare? How was, like, you know, his outlook or his change and his, you know, his whole, uh, the, the whole processing thing, like, it's all, it's all up to him, man. Like, ain't too much I can really tell him, man. That ain't nothing I can really tell him that he don't know, man. He know what he got to do, you know? So I just, I, I just really just, I look just, I just want to see him come to practice. He just, when he kind of practice, you know, we just get right back to it, back on the ground. I'd agree with that. He's a, he's a very smart guy. He's a competitor, like you said. So he'll, he'll be back soon enough, no doubt about that. Um, how did you celebrate the big win in Raleigh, North Carolina? Was there a lot to do out there for you to sow those wild oats, so to speak? You know, you know, you know, you know, it was the best thing. You know, uh, I think North Carolina got this, uh, it's like this local soda that they make. It's like this cherry cola soda. That was the best thing that they had back there. Um, <laughs> they had ice cream and it wasn't melted in the green room. So that's good. Um, I ordered some, I got back to the hotel one. There wasn't nothing really too much open there, but because I stayed and watched all the fights in the back. But uh, we, we got back and um, we just hung out downstairs in the hotel bar, little lobby area, ordered some pizza. Then I went to sleep. And it's time to go home. You flew back on Sunday? Of course. Gotta get right back home. I gotta go home, man. So Saturday, obviously a, a fun night in the sports world. Sunday, a little bit of a different story. You know, we, we all know what happened there with the the tragic helicopter crash, which killed nine people. One, one Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna was was a part of that. And you know, whether you were a fan of Kobe or, or a sports fan in general or any really walk of life, I think that one stung a little bit. Like it caused a lot of reflection, at least for me, and it made us, you know, sort of take a look at ourselves and those around us. And it was a really tough pill to swallow. And the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, this was a lesson and we've talked about media and journalism and things like that. This is a lesson in media as well, that being right about the information is more important than being first to report something. So I think that was a lesson to be learned. But man, what, what a what a crappy day Sunday was. How did you react to that? I was crying, man. Kobe, Kobe Brown was like. Kobe, Kobe Brown was, was, was the man, man. Like, like you talk about a person that's like unrelenting, that's like, like work hard, determination, like, like self-critical, like, like holding himself, like, like the self-accountability that guy had and it got showed. And like, it just, it, it, like he, he gave that off and he gave off that, that, that confidence, man. And he, He wasn't afraid, man. He wasn't afraid to take the tough shots, to take the pressure, to carry the like he wanted that. He embraced that. And then two, like, Kobe gonna shoot that motherfucker. He shooting it. He ain't looking to pass. He ain't looking at the to get a ball up. He coming down, he taking the tough shots. Like he like, like he like he talk about like a like a person like put a team on their back and just carry a whole team. Like that's Kobe Bryant, man. And like he, he was just like super smart man, super smart man, very analytical man. And he paid he paid so much attention to the detail inside and outside of the game, and you know just being able to make adjustments and come down the court and read a defense, break down someone's offense, like pick up Tennessee's habits, like how they coordinate it, what they like, what they don't like, how they react to this type of defense. Looking at all the options of of a, like of how to break down defense. If this guy's coming to help, if this guy's lagging, if this guy's slow, if he's getting beat on the dribble, how this guy like holds defense. You know, like every, everything, everything like 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 Kobe. Kobe was the man. That uh, that guy broke. I'm a Celtics fan. I'm, I grew up in the Boston area. He he broke our hearts many many times. And I think the great broadcaster Sean Grandy kind of said it best on Sunday. Just when he didn't think. Just when you think Kobe couldn't break your heart anymore, you know, all of this went down. It was just really sad. And I, I, I want to end on this because you had mentioned something that, that struck a chord about being analytical. And, and I think we've seen recently in, in our sport, there's, 
you know, an influx of, of active fighters that become coaches and they carve out a path in that way. You know, James Krause is a guy that comes to mind, but I also think that Zach Otto is a guy that should be getting a little more attention these days as a coach. He's been doing a great job. Like, you you know, he's a very analytical guy in his own right. He knows his stuff. He sees things that, that other people may not see. And Zach is obviously one of your coaches. And if we're having this conversation in a year, two years from right now, how do you think the MMA world is viewing Zach Otto, the coach? I can't tell you, man. Uh, pe- people's people's opinions change about others every now and again. I don't know, man. It just if it, if anything, man. Let's let, let's see how it shake up when it's all said and done. You know, because 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 one minute now they they hate you, one, one the other minute they love you. It, it goes up and down. Or oh, he did a good job doing this. Or I don't like when he did that with this guy. Or that was a wrong. You know. So you gotta look at the overall body of work. You know. So we we'll see when it's all said and done. How much but, has it helped you, you know, from your perspective? A lot, man. A lot. Just just being, just like, you know, Zach having a, a ton of fights on, like, the, uh, on the regional scale, you know? Like, a, a lot of fights. and a, Like, a lot of tough fights. Just, especially at the time in his career. Like, yeah, think about, it, like, like, Zach, like, Zach and Jake, like, they didn't, they didn't really have no coaches. They was, like, majority of their career was, like, self taught like, and majority of the stuff they learned about the fight game, they had to learn the hard way. Like, they had to learn about managing it, how to get fights, how to set up fights, how to be, how to become a promoter, how promoters work, how promoters screw over people, how management works, how management don't work. Like, they learned all that stuff the hard way, you know, through trials and tribulations, man. So, just being able to have have that type of access of knowledge and you know have those like two brains right there is 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 more than a blessing for me and my teammates like that's that's a lot of stuff that like a lot of people don't get to see they don't value you know but I I value that stuff I value our information so whatever you know Zach got to offer whatever insight he can bring man I like I I hold that to, to I hold that or equivalent equivalent that to the truth so. It's, it's more than more than appreciated for me. Nothing but gratitude for me on, on both of their parts. Great performance, Montel. Congratulations on the win, and we look forward to seeing what's next. And uh, by the way, what, one of the things I was hearing a lot heading into this fight was a comparison between you and John Jones in terms of your natural ability, what you bring to the table, how quickly you've evolved, and, and things like that. Do you welcome those kinds of comparisons? What do you think of that? Uh, thank him, but you know, I'm on telling he John, I'm here, he there. So, you know, I thank you much gratitude, you know, thank you for whatever, but you know, don't ever compare me, don't ever let yourself be compared, and don't compare yourself to other people because that's not you, you're yourself. And two, like, it'll make you crazy, so don't do it, you know, everybody got their own path. I would agree with that 100%. Uh, thank you as always, Montel. I appreciate the time. Uh, before I let you go, uh, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media, any other shout outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, man. W- one more thing, man. With the media, man, like what they did, man, what team, what teams he did and all those media, disrespectful, man. Disrespectful, man. Like where, where is like, where, where's the moral, where's the morals, where's the ethics, where, where's the, the principles like, why would they do that? Why why would they like leave, why would they give like that that's, that's some fucked up shit, man. These people had to find out that their loved ones die in a car crash on the internet. Like that that would just like no respect, man. No respect for the dead, no respect for the living, man. Like that that was horrible, man. That that was hor- horrible, man. Like this day that we live in, man, with with, with, with like media and social media, man, and it is that was just horrible, man. Like that was crazy. One of the biggest lessons I've ever gotten. And, you know, I didn't go to journalism school or things like that. I'm kind of learning on the fly myself and I know what's right and what's wrong. And I think like hearing Denzel Washington talk to a member of the media on the red carpet about, you know, being first and, and ethics and in journalism and things like that. That's one of the things that like really stuck out to me. He goes, it's not about, it's all about being right. It's not about being first. And I think especially with something like that, you have to be cognizant of those kinds of things and, you know, it's, it's a lesson that needs to be learned. It's not about being first. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a man and his daughter and seven other people lost their lives. 
who cares who reported it first? Like nobody cares. Nobody cares. It it, uh, it it was just I just couldn't even think in my head like that's horrible, 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 horrible. It's crazy. It's not right. It's not right. You know the family didn't get a chance to to really like let it sink in, and you know it's it's sad enough as it is, and to find out about it on Twitter or on Facebook like that's I can't even imagine. Can't even imagine it. Hey. Right. That was that was just like disgusting and classless. Like I don't even want to talk about it no more, man. Like yeah, I agree. That's um, yeah, I don't know if we can even transition from that point. Um, but thank you. Anything else you want to say before we let you go, sir? No, man. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, shout out to Mister Ed from Iridium. Shout out Iridium Sports Management. Shout out Pure Vida, my coaches, all my teammates. Shout out Sky Houston's 360 Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Shout out Flow Life. Shout out Trifecta. And you guys can follow me on social media at Montel Quick Jackson on Facebook. Montel Quick Jackson on Instagram with the handle of Yosui Rapido and Montello 135 on Twitter. Thank you guys. Thanks, Montel. Appreciate it. Peace, love, and plenty of hair grease, my brother. You too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>